Okay, so this problem um, is asking us to, uh, with using this function here, um, we need to determine if the graph is increasing or decreasing, and then we also need to determine at an increasing or decreasing rate. So what we're going to do is say, all right, to, to determine if something's increasing or decreasing, one easy way of doing that is looking at the derivative function. And the rate at which it's increasing or decreasing would come from the second derivative and comparing them. So we're going to run through this problem straightforward. And oh, and then of course, I apologize, we're going to do it for the point of uh, where x equals 1.5. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a run at the problem straightforward and then we'll talk about other, uh, other ideas you could be reviewing with this. So first things first, we need the derivative. So when you take the derivative of your function, you should be getting 3x squared plus 6x, excuse me. 6x minus 2. So now we don't we're not asking for the intervals, all the intervals where it's increasing or decreasing. We're asking about just at x equals 1.5. So what I can do is substitute in the value of 1.5. And let's see what we get. Um, so this is gonna be 3 times 1.5 squared plus 6 times 1.5 minus 2. And that will come out to be um, 13.75 is what my calculator is telling me. You can verify that in your calculator as well. Um, so got that. So now we have to ask ourselves, what does that mean? Well, we have to remember, a first derivative is talking about rate of change. So in this case, it's, if you think of it this way, it's 13.75 over 1, which means we have a rise of 13.75 and a run of 1, um, or we're going up 13.75 13 to the right 1, aka, whatever the case, we're going up, which means our graph is increasing. Okay, so our graph is increasing. That's part one to the problem. So now we got to go on to part two. What is part two asking about? Well, is it, what rate is it doing it? Okay, and so how do you figure out the rate? Well, that is where you, um, you use the second derivative. So we're going to go ahead and say that's double prime. So we have to do the second derivative of that, which would be 6x plus 6. And once again, we're not asking about it for the entire graph, we're asking, so I don't care what makes this equal to zero. All I'm talking about is what is happening at the value of 1.5. So I'm gonna go ahead and substitute that in and figure out what that gives us. And I got, in my calculator, I got the number 15. So now comes the interpretation. What is that telling us? If we know that it is, um, excuse me, we know that the graph is increasing and it has a positive concavity because the second derivative is positive, therefore we know it is concave up. What does that mean to me? Well, and the very nice, the, the nice thing you can remember is if you remember to the derivative number line tests, first derivative to second derivative, the general rule was if well, I'll go through all of them. Why not? I'm going to go through every single combination. There we go. Okay, so if you have a positive first derivative, that means your graph is increasing. And if your concavity is up, it means you are increasing at a increasing rate. Because not only are we, we're on a concave up graph, and not only are we on a place where our slope is positive, but we're also, if you look at the graph, it's going up faster and faster and faster because it's concave up. So therefore, we're increasing at an increasing rate. Now, if you are a positive first derivative, once again, that means your graph is increasing, but we're concave down. So if you kind of imagine that, that would look like, okay, sorry to jump over here to you. Um, so we are increasing, which means if I'm concave down, I'm somewhere on this part of it because my slope is positive, but the graph is slowing down, slowing down. It's, it's, it's not going up as quickly. So that means we're increasing at a decreasing rate. Um, if it's negative, negative, then that means your graph is decreasing. And because we are concave down, you can look at it here, it means our slope would be going negative. And the next part you see our graph is getting going down faster and faster and faster. So we're decreasing at an increasing rate. And similarly here, um, our graph is going down, but we're concave up. So if we're concave up, but your graph is going down, that means you're somewhere on this side, which means you are 
decreasing, and the rate at which we're decreasing is also decreasing. And the easy rule of thumb, if they match, when they match, excuse me, well, just, when the signs match, you are at a rate that is increasing, and if they don't match, then your rate is decreasing. Um, I hope that helps. So there you go. So that's so. So now we can make the decision on this. We know because our graph is concave up, and we know our first derivative is, is positive. We're increasing. They match. So that means that this particular point at at x equals 1.5, we can make the statement that we are increasing at an increasing rate. Okay, so there you go. I hope that helps for this problem. So now let me let me talk about uh, just in general the first derivative number line test, second derivative number line test. Now we can kind of use that stuff. So what I'm going to do here is grab our same equation. Okay. And what I'm going to do is just use this first derivative. Um, Oops, excuse me. So now, this is completely just review. This has nothing to do with the problem. We're, we're kind of done answering that question. So if it was on a test, you wouldn't be doing this. Okay. So the idea here now is that we have a first derivative. And we could use this to figure out where it's equal to 0. Because anywhere it's equal to 0, remember, means you have a slope of a tangent line that is equal to 0. Um, which means you have a max or a min, but it also tells you it's the only places, or one of the ways you can you can change from going from an increasing function to a decreasing function, aka meaning your slopes are positive and now your slopes are negative. So I want to go ahead and solve this uh, to figure out where I could potentially switch from increasing to decreasing slopes. Um, so and we should recognize that this is a quadratic, and unfortunately, if you try to factor it, um, I had no such luck. So we're going to have to go quadratic formula with it. So that would be negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c. So let's see, 4 times 3 is 12. 12 times negative 2 is negative 24 all over 2a. And there we go. So now that gives us, with a little bit of simplification, we can, uh, this underneath the radical would be, what, 60. So therefore... How does that factor out? 10 and 6, 2 and 5, 2 and 3. So that's going to be 2 rad 15 over 6. So therefore, we can factor out a 2 out of everything and divide. So that's going to be negative 3 plus or minus rad 15 over 3. Um, so that is quasi unhelpful. <laughs> we kind of need to know. Um, where that would be on a number line so we know where to check. We need to see where, where are my answers, so where could we possibly check, be checking on the first derivative number line. Um, so we actually need decimal approximations. So we'll go ahead and pop down our calculator and we should get, there you go, uh, 0 0.29 and negative 2.29. So therefore, I know I need to check these places and see what kind of, what's going on with my graph. Is it increasing or decreasing at these places? So um, I go back to my original first derivative equation, which I have right here. I'm going to go ahead and drag it down right here. Okay, so I can just see it. All right, so my first derivative equation, let's go ahead and substitute in some numbers. If I substitute in something to the left of negative 2.29, um, I don't know, like negative a billion, that would be 3 times negative a billion, whatever that number is, I really don't care, squared, plus six times a really, really, again, really, really big negative number. And the idea here is these things over here don't matter because this number is going to be so big, it's going to be, it's going to trump the other ones. This is a negative times a negative makes a positive, a positive times three is a positive, so therefore everything over here is going to be positive. So then now I need to substitute in a number somewhere between negative 2.29 and 0 0.29. Hey, 0 seems like a really good idea because when we substitute in 0, uh, how nice is that? It's 3 times 0 plus 6 times 0 minus 2. That's negative. And then finally, same logic. Um, this one will be when you plug in any number bigger than 0 0.29, like a billion, um, you get a positive number once again. So now I know, I can say with certainty, that my graph is increasing on the intervals, 
um, and I can write it right here, I'll move it later, but it's increasing on the intervals of negative infinity up to negative 2.29. Oops, excuse me, put my hand on the slider. And it's increasing from 0 0.29 up to positive infinity. So we can now say with certainty, if, if you ask me about any points that falls in that range, I know my graph is increasing, which is true because we, we already tested the 1.5 and that would fall into this range and we, knew, we see the graph was increasing. So now let's go ahead and do the second derivative test portion of the problem. Okay, so um, we have our first derivative. So to get our second derivative, the good news, the math is getting easier. Uh, we just have 6x plus 6. Um, and so now we can say to ourselves, okay, the a, a similar logic as before is anywhere we have a concavity change, um, we're going from concave up to concave down, the only way that can occur, or at least one way that can occur, is when this is equal to zero. So I can solve this, and I end up getting subtract the six, divide by six, I end up getting x equals negative one, um, which therefore means if I look at a second derivative number line, the, the, the only place that this graph would have a change from one concavity to another could occur at negative one. So once again, test the number to the left, substitute in any value into my second derivative equation uh, that is less than negative one. So we could do negative two. Uh, six times negative two is negative 12. Negative 12 plus six is, hey, that's a negative number, which means I am concave down anywhere from negative infinity to negative one. And then plug in, some, plug in some number bigger than negative one, like zero, like we'll see positive six. So now we can say I am concave actually, I'm concave down from negative infinity to negative one, and I am concave up. I'll write the word concave up from negative one to infinity. So now we're going to put everything together. Well, let me put the two number lines next to each other. Okay, and what you'll see here is um, we're, we're going to break it up because the, let me find it from up above, the table that I had made before, there we go. What we need to do is compare first derivatives to second derivatives, and we need to see if they match or if they're different. So what I'm going to do is draw lines here that describe that idea. So what I'm going to do is kind of break it up. So we'll say there's one break there, one break there, one break there. Those are the possible places where I could switch from either being positive to negative or negative to positive. And I'll just go ahead and fill in all the gaps. So we saw in the first derivative, we went from positive to negative. Now it can't change in this interval because that was caused by second derivative. So it's still gonna be negative. Then this, this change occurred because of the first derivative graph. Let me make it really dark. There we go. So because it's a first derivative change, now it can go to positive. Down below, second derivatives were negative on the left. So it's gonna be negative. Then we had our change over to the positives, so there we go. So now we can talk about intervals of not only just increasing and decreasing, or concave up and concave down, but I can talk about increasing with a, and at what rate it's doing so. Is it at doing an increasing rate or decreasing rate? So because I have a positive first derivative, it means my graph is increasing, and a negative second derivative, they don't match, which means it's doing it at a decreasing rate. Uh, for this one here, they match, so it means my graph is decreasing at a decreasing rate. Um, similar here, for this one here, we have a negative first derivative, which means we are decreasing, and we, have a, we do not have a match, we have a concave up, which means we're doing it at a decreasing rate. And then last but not least here, they match. So our graph is increasing because of the first derivative, and it's doing it at a increasing. Okay, so this method would take you through any problem I could ask you. It was way overkill for this problem, but I hope it helped people review it.